Hi everyone, it's Erin from AB Mixed Media. I'm really excited to be part of the 10 Arty Questions Hop. And what that is, is a video hop on YouTube that was pulled together by Nina Fickett of Nina Fickett Designs and Hope Smitherman of Crafty Hope. They um, invited 10 artists to answer 10 arty questions on video. So I'm one of those artists and the other artists are um, listed below with links to their videos in the hop. And I believe the next stop on your hop would be Nina of Nina Fickett Designs and her link again is below with all the other artists. So I encourage you to go and listen to them answer these questions as well. So I wanted to do a video where I was doing something while I was answering these questions, but I think I'm gonna just put together some collage clusters while I'm talking. Um, I've got these substrates. Some of them are a kind of a heavier paper, weight paper. They're things I don't like. This was part of a larger piece. Uh, this I never have been too fond of. This is kind of meh. And then the rest are just little papers. But I thought I would make some collage clusters that I could use later on in different journals. So like here's a piece of paper that I probably would never really use. But I think if you put it in a cluster, it sort of works because it's going to be covered up mostly. So anyway, so let's get to the questions while I'm doing this. The first question is, what in your artistic career has given you the most joy? The thing that's given me the most joy has been the 100 Day Project, which I've done now for the past two years. And um, I have chosen to send out to make artist trading cards. And I set a limit for myself to do them in, in five minutes. That way I would, you know, be more apt to go up and do it if I only had to commit five minutes every day. And then I invited uh, people to sign up for a card. So uh, I gave away a hundred of them. I mailed them to people um, across the world, actually. So I would sit down, create a card in five minutes. Sometimes it would take me a little longer, but I tried to do it in five minutes and then I would mail them out to people. Uh, and that was just so wonderful. I just connected with so many people online and um, so many people sent me cards back or packets of paper and uh, it was just really amazing. It, the connections I made, I did that two years in a row and, and I really just loved it. I thought it was fabulous. Um, and if I do the uh, 100 Day Project again, I would totally do that again. Um, I've done it two years and it, it just gave me way more joy than the people who I was sending the cards to, I found. I just found great satisfaction in it. That's not too bad. Not too bad, it's not great. Wonder if I can put like a tea bag or something in here. No, that kind of matches that. Let's see. That's kind of cool. This is um packing tape, gummed packing tape. And you just wet the back of it. And it sticks. It's got a sticky backing on it. So essentially what I'm doing is just making kind of a tiny collage. I might take this piece out because it's so cool. I hate to bury it. But now I need something else in here. Okay, so the next question is, if you could have only five art supplies, what would you choose? I think I would have to say my gold pen, pens in general. I've got my gold one here. This is my, what are they called again? Signo. Uniball Signo, I have it in gold. And then I have this jelly roll pen from Securo. I think it's, that's the name of it, yeah, Secura uh, jelly roll pen in black. So pens would be my favorite. I also like this white one, which is also a Signo pen. Gesso is another one. Liquitex Gesso is my favorite. So that's two. Um, what would my third favorite art supply be? Probably acrylic paint. And lately I've been really liking um the apple barrel paints because they're fr they're so uh they're craft paints and they're just so cheap <laughs> and they come in a variety of really cool colors so i guess that would be my third i think my fourth favorite thing would probably be stencils 
Uh, I think they just add so much depth and texture. And then do painted papers count as a art supply? Uh, I just pretty much start everything with some kind of paper substrate. And usually it's a combination of paid in papers and then maybe book pages and things. But so I guess, yeah, like, I, you know, other people might say, oh, my watercolor set, but I have to have the papers. Um, that's so important to me. Let's see, I need to wet this down with something. Um, what is my go-to color palette? That's the next question. Uh, my go-to color palette would have to be right now the pinks and the uh, yellows um, basically this color palette right here, pinks and yellows that, uh, when mixed together, you get oranges. That is probably my most favorite. I've been working with it now for a while. It's kind of these colors from Apple Barrel, King's Gold, Candy Pink, Peachy Pink, and Apricot. Those are probably my most favorite right now and have been for quite some time. Uh, if I had to pick a second, it would probably be uh, the blues and the greens um, that you see here, for example. Those are a lot of my papers in all of those colors. This is an example of the other color palette here with a master piece of master board there. Okay, I think that's pretty good for a cluster. I could add something. Maybe I'll do that in a bit. That's one. All right. This is fun paper. I used a bunch of stencils from Dina Marissa to make this paper, so easy to make. There's a video on my YouTube channel, I think, uh, on how I made this paper. This isn't a very heavy paper, so I might want to put it on something heavier at some point. That's too close. That's not the right color. What about that? That's kind of blending in. Hmm, what's this one? That's interesting. Let's just tear that. Oh, I should have gotten that. No, oh, well. That nice pink, intense pink blob that would have been nice to have captured that, but I tore it. I think I want something bigger. There. Now I got a little bit of that big pink, pink blobby. Heart. That's so yummy right there. All right, keep moving. What's the next question? <laughs> How do I feel about digital kits, freebies, or otherwise? Uh, for those of you who don't know, digital kits are, uh, there's artists out there who take um, things that they create and they scan them and, and sell them as a digital download. Uh, so it could be, it could be a whole kit, like here's how you can make a journal and here's everything you need to make the journal. Um, this is some of my most favorite paper ever. It was one this of my paper. first Happy Mail trades. She sent me this paper. This might be the very last of it. I just, I love this mustard and pink combination. It is just so fabulous. Um, anywho, oh, let's use some of this. I just picked this up to move it out of the way, but this is cool. This is drywall tape. Let's put some of this in. All right, so back to digital kits. So I think digital kits can be really helpful if you're starting out. Um, and then I also love it when I'm taking a class or a lesson of some sort and the artist, the instructor provides some digital downloads. When I did a class for Messy May, um, I created a, a digital download of florals because a lot of people, you know, they don't have the time to do it all or they're new and they're maybe a little intimidated. So I just provided a sheet where if you didn't have time to make the flowers or you didn't have the supplies to make the florals or you know, you were just intimidated or didn't didn't want to do it, you know, but still want to have some time to do art, I provided the florals so they could do everything else in the lesson and just use the florals that I sent them by printing them out and cutting them up and putting them on the page. So I think they can be a great, if it gets you making art, it's great. 
why not, right? That's the name of the game. Does that need more? I mean, if I put a floral or something on there, and maybe that's what we'll do is go back and add something to it. I feel like I want one more piece of paper though. I need something. Something hot pink, that's too tissue papery. I could take this, but I feel like it should have a pattern of some sort on it. So let's put a pattern on it. Let's just do some circles or something. Okay, what's the next question? That was digital. Okay. What motivates you to create art? What is the why behind your art? Gosh, I don't know. I have always wanted, I've always been crafty. You know, as a kid, I did everything, latch hooking and macrame, and I decorated cakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, in school, I gravitated more towards music and the way our school system was set up, and I think is often the case, is you had to kind of choose between art and music. You couldn't do both as electives. Uh, so, and I did theater. Um, so then it wasn't until, but then I continued with crafts. I quilted and I sewed, and um, it wasn't until later that I took some drawing classes just a few. I did graphic design at work. I got thrown into that and kind of self-taught, took a couple classes in graphic design. Um, but it wasn't until my kids got a lot older that I took a painting class and enjoyed that. Um, but I think when I really got into it, um, I was in between jobs, COVID hit, I was dealing with elderly parents. Um, and my mother had Alzheimer's. Um, and so a lot of it was motivated by grief. It was a way to work through the grief. A lot of my early art journaling was honoring my mother and my memories of my family. Um, and it kind of helped me work through that. Uh, now, I, it's just kind of the sheer joy of doing it. I was kind of held back for a long time because I always felt like art had to have a function uh, just to spend money on supplies to make something for the sheer joy of making it uh, didn't seem practical to me. Um, I felt guilty doing that. Uh, it had to have a reason, you know, I had to have a reason for it. So. Um, I could sew because I was making a quilt for our bed or I was making a baby quilt for our kids or curtains. I could decorate cakes because that was cheaper than buying a birthday cake for the kids. Um, yeah, that's a little better, I think. Um, so, so the art always had to have a function and it was only in the last few years with art journaling especially I discovered I can just sit down and create art and it doesn't have to, it's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of resources. It is therapy. It is nurturing me. It is feeding my soul <laughs> on many levels. And I don't have to have a reason beyond that to do it. And doing it on paper in a journal, it's, you know, I was painting on canvases. Well, after a while, you, you don't have enough room in your house to for all these canvases, you know? <laughs> you have to, um, you, you just can't hang up everything that you paint. I find that too, like people that knit, they just, they, they, they don't need all the things that they knit. And then they're trying to give it away. Ooh. No, that doesn't look good. Um, so I think, the beauty of art journaling is it's compact. You know, you just create in these spaces. I don't like that. In these journals and they don't take up a lot of room. And if you hate what you create, you paint over it or you glue the pages together and, um, you know, move on. So I think that's been the great thing about it. So I guess I create for the sheer joy of it. Um, and how it kind of nurtures me and 
um, I don't know, feeds my soul, I guess. <laughs> All right. I think I rambled on that one a bit. What's your favorite substrate to work on and why? Well, paper, I guess. What kind of paper is another story? I have a journal I love. Let me get it here. This is my graph paper notebook. If you've watched my YouTube channel, you'll see that I've done a lot of journal pages in this. It's really cheap graph paper. It's very, very thin. And I glue multiple pages together to thicken them up. But I, for some reason, I love working in this journal. This is my best, like most every page in this journal is one that I love. They just work out. I don't know. There's something magical about this journal. So I love working on this substrate a lot. I've, I love working on cardboard. I don't do it a lot, but I do enjoy working on cardboard. I've done some pieces on cardboard, especially when I do the Ugly Art Club 5-Minute Challenge. I've done cardboard with those, and I just love it. Um, so those are some of the substrates I really like. Do I like that? This is a security envelope, which is pretty cool. I feel like this needs something, something, like some teardrop type things. I don't even know if I'm on camera here. All right, what was the next question? When you work in layers, which one is your favorite? Well, I guess the first layer can be my favorite, especially if I'm starting with some amazing piece of paper. Um, so something like this, if I were to start with this as the first layer, that just gives you so much to work from. And oftentimes I'll use um, under paper, which is, for example, this, <laughs> which I've been saving. So this is the paper on which I was doing other projects. Um, and I was doing something with a credit card or a gift card and I had a lot of leftover paint and I just started making these fans on here. Oh, here's the card, <laughs> it's actually stuck here. Um, and this this is just great paper to start from. So that can be the most important layer. If you were to start, like I'm seeing this now and I'm loving this, this square here, or rectangle, that makes your piece because you're starting from such a great point. If you don't have that and you're just covering it with book pages, say, or something, then I wouldn't consider that piece that important. It does add to the piece, it adds depth. So I guess that layer would be one of the most important. I think my favorite layer is the last layer at the very end when you're adding uh, a touch of gold here, a touch of gold there, maybe a few last minute marks or outlines the sentiment, some splatters, just those very last few things, the top, top layer, that's what sort of can make your piece sing. It's just those final little finishing touches that can bring everything together. And I really like that. I think this pen is about shot. Well, it's mostly gonna be covered up, right? I don't really like how that looks. But... No, I'm not liking that. All right, let's glue this down and keep moving. All right, what's the next question? Where do you live? Does where you live and grew up have any influence on your art? This was my question. I think it's interesting. I think geography is very impactful on our lives. And I, I'm always kind of interested to know where people come from, where they grew up. And, and if that influences their work or where they currently live. I definitely think um, I live in a climate, I live in Maine, in North America, and um, I live in a climate where we have four seasons. So that that's definitely impactful to me. I My art changes with the seasons. You know, my color palettes oftentimes will change with the seasons. So that's... Um, that's impactful. Uh, I also live by the ocean, so I'm oftentimes influenced by the ocean. I have a really pretty garden. Just in the last few years, my garden has really taken off. We've worked so hard on it. And um, 
that inspires me every day in the summer when I go out and have my coffee on my porch and look out over my yard and my garden. So I definitely think that for me anyway, where I live, the environment I'm in, I do also think I'm influenced by where I grew up, which was central Illinois in the United States. And it's very flat there. Um, it's a farm country. So lots of you know, fields of corn and soybeans, and there's a real bounty and a real beauty in that very flat, fertile land. Um, and that imagery, I think, speaks to me a lot. It certainly did when I was doing more acrylic painting on canvas. I was often drawn to uh, things that evoked, you know, I would, I would do corn grain silos and and uh corn fields and and these fields of crops and that sort of stuff really interested me um so yeah I definitely think it has an impact and I guess maybe that's at least on me and so I guess maybe that's why I wanted to ask that question of other artists to see if it was true for everyone or just me <laughs> so yeah. No. Here? Yes. Okay. That's nice. That turned out okay. I don't like how that looks, but I'm not sure what to do about it. Maybe we'll just cover that up and make them gold teardrops without any outlines and it'll look better. I love how art is problem solving and it's a skill you can take out of your art studio into your everyday life. Okay, next. What are your favorite types of journals to work in and why? Well, I already shared with you this journal with the graph paper and how much I just love it. Um, and I'll do a flip through when I'm finished with it, but I don't know why I like this paper. I love having the graph paper show through. Um, Maybe because it was a $5 notebook, I just feel uninhibited. I don't know. I like that one. And then lately, I've been doing a lot of collaging in this square um, craft journal from Ranger. And I've been love, I love working on the craft. Craft is a little bit trickier. The way it takes paint, it's a little harder. This is all just collages. I have another one that is uh, mostly mixed media with acrylics. That's this one. There is a flip through of this on my YouTube channel. Um, so I've, I've been enjoying these journals. This is just a children's board book. And it makes a really kind of cool substrate because it's these, you know, hard pages or thick pages. So you can see how thick these are. This was a and Care December journal that I made a junk journal and that's really fun and again this is like problem solving because all the papers are different so you land on a page and you kind of have to figure out a way to make it work so those are challenging and fun in their own right and I want to do more of this I tend to just go for the store-bought journals because it's easy but I want to do more of making my own journals and working in those so that's a good challenge for me and then the last question is um, do I want to do this one? I think this could be tricky. I just don't like this. I don't see ever using it. So I thought, well, maybe I can make it into something that I do want to use. Uh, okay. What's your biggest struggle as an artist and how do you overcome it? I think just getting up and getting to my art table is probably my biggest struggle. Um, I work, um, part-time, three days a week, almost 30 hours a week. Uh, so when I get home, I'm tired <laughs> and there's chores and there's, you know, things you have to do to keep your household running. And um, for the longest time I was caring for my parents, not, not physically, you know, they didn't live with me, but I mean, I was handling their business matters and flying to them when they became ill. And they've both passed away in the last year. So I don't have that responsibility anymore, which is heartbreaking on one level, but 
it has been a little more freeing because I'm not as exhausted. Um, so I feel like I do have more bandwidth these days for art. Um, but you know, I come home from work. I came home from work yesterday. It was a Friday. I got home about three o'clock. I got out early and thought, I'm just going to sit down on the couch for a minute and just veg out and look at Twitter or Instagram. And I didn't get up. And I mean, I did a few things. I read and I edited some videos and, you know, it wasn't like I was totally unproductive, but I vegged on the couch for hours and it's terrible. And I kept thinking, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go upstairs later and start working on some things. And, um, I didn't do it. It was too easy to sit there and just veg out. Once I get upstairs and get going, you know, I'm fine. It's just that initial. And when you're tired, at least for me, I don't feel that creative. It's hard for me to get going. So So I think that's my biggest challenge. I really do. This is turning out cool. I'm digging this. How do I overcome it? Oh, that was the second half of the question. How do I overcome it? I think looking at Instagram is helpful because it can be inspiring. Watching videos and taking classes, taking classes especially is helpful because you have kind of have deadlines, you know, not really, but you don't want to fall behind if you're doing something like Wanderlust or Fodder School or whatever. Um, so that's, that is helpful. That's encouraging. That keeps you kind of motivated. Um, I, sometimes I just, if I can get myself up the stairs to my art room and I can just start looking at papers and pulling things out. And then I see something like this and I'm like, wow, those are cool colors together. I could maybe do something with this. And then I start playing, but it takes sort of that getting your hands on it, thinking about it and then getting motivated to do it. Um, so those are the kinds of things. This was a happy mail paper that I received and it's sticker paper. It's so fun. Yeah, so those are some of the issues I have and how I try to motivate myself <laughs> to get going and get something done. Cover it up. So those are my arty questions. I got through them all um, and I was able to make four of these. So let's um, finish up by adding some sentiments and jazzing these up just a little bit. Okay, so I added just a few little um, embellishments to these clusters. This one I just put a cute little floral on. This one I added a few of my little whimsical watercolor posies, which now I think makes that look really cute. Um, so I took a page, a piece of paper I didn't really like and turned it in something cute. This one turned out adorable. It would be cute on the cover of a card to give to someone for a birthday gift or some other um, celebratory reason. I love how that one turned out. And then this one, forgive me for rushing fall, but the colors just evoked fall for me. So I pulled out some of my watercolor pumpkins and added a sentiment that just says, give thanks. And I think that's really cute as well. That concludes my portion of 10 arty questions. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, there are 10 other artists that are answering questions and having videos as part of this hop. Uh, you can find all the links to the other videos below. Your next stop is Nina of Nina Fickett Designs. So take a meander through the rest of these videos. I think you'll find them really interesting and fun, and you'll get to know these artists and a little bit more about what makes them tick. That's it for me today. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon. You can always find me on Instagram, EB Mixed Media. That's EB underscore Mixed Media. Thanks. Bye.